began to walk around. And if you have in your Bible, it's quote, quote, she was 12 years old. Immediately, the girl stood up and began to walk around. She was 12 years old. I want to preach today with this thought in mind. I'm too old for this. I'm going to say that again. Immediately the girl stood up and began to walk around. She was 12 years old. And we're going to have that thought in mind today. I'm too old for this. I want you to shake your neighbor by the hand and say, neighbor, I'm too old for this. I'm too old to still be gossip. Look at somebody say, I'm too old for this. I'm too old to be worried about what you think about me. I'm too old for this. I'm too old to be caught up in people's mess. I'm too old for this. I'm too old to always try to blame somebody else for my problems. I'm too old for this. I'm too old not to see the favor of God working in my life. Look behind and say, I'm too old for this. Some of us are too old to still be acting the way we've been acting. You've been in church all these years and you still ain't doing no better. You're too old for this. I know we weren't going to shout too much today. Um, but I'm too old for this. It's interesting to note then, ladies and gentlemen, that while Jesus was speaking in the circumference of our text, we notice that he's healing a woman with an issue of blood. And after that moment, church officials show up and announce, we have a problem with a young girl. As a matter of fact, this is the daughter of a church leader. There's a footnote in your text that suggests, ladies and gentlemen, that this young lady who is now facing demon and death that has been overwhelmed by sickness, the footnote lets us know that she's 12 years old. She's 12 years old. And this is significant because it means that she's in the year that she's getting ready to process into adulthood. It's the year that she's getting ready to mature. It's the year that she's getting ready to get responsibility. It's the year that she's able to make sound decisions. Y'all are looking at me like I've lost you. I think I've lost you, so let me pull you back in. And you must understand that where you are right now, 2013, it's the year to become mature. Because 2012 was the year that everything hit the fan. People out of my past started coming out the woodworks. I felt like my back was up against the wall. And 2012 was the year that my sleep became erratic. 2012 was the year that things began to squeeze the life out of you. And I felt like life was closing in on me. And the reason why I came in here today is to give the devil a nervous breakdown because I'm still living September the 1st, 2013, which signifies that I should be at a place of maturity. So the stuff that used to bother me no longer faces me anymore. Because the 13th year is the time for maturity to kick in. And I'm talking to some people in the room who can understand what is happening for you. This being the 13th year, you did not come to church looking for somebody to love you. I did not come in here looking for acceptance. I did not come to be seen. I did not come for a position. And people think that what you have gone through in your life may have disqualified you. But some of us know that what God has for me doesn't even match my resume. God help me in here. Where God is getting ready to take me, it's almost shocking to me 
And what I'm getting ready to attain doesn't even match my credit report. Ladies and gentlemen, y'all not shouting in here, but that's why I don't need you to approve my value. Because I knew my value when I walked out of the house this morning. I already knew that I was blessed and highly favored. They go to this girl and they thought she was dead. They thought she was dead. And ladies and gentlemen, I hope you realize that in the year that God is going to embarrass the people who owe you an apology. Y'all missed that. Uh, six of y'all should have been shouting. I'm going to say that again because I know that some people are thinking in their mind, Pastor, we in the ninth month. But God is an on-time God. Before the year is over, because we're in the 13th year, God is getting ready to embarrass the people who owe you an apology. Because after all that they've done to try to break you, now they got to realize there's a different level of anointing on my life. I'm in verse 39 of Mark chapter 5. Jesus says, she's not dead. She's asleep. The Bible is open. She's not dead. She's asleep. And this is only for a few of y'all who can handle it. God says today, I came to wake up your dream. Mm. There's something that has been asleep inside of you. God help me here. God says everything that I have promised you Everything that you have prayed for while you were in your secret room. This is the season that I'm going to wake up your dream. And I'm talking to somebody here. And your dream has been sleeping. And there's something significant that you were called to do. And can I tell somebody who is listening to me that there is more to your life than what it is that you're doing right now. God, help me here. There's more to getting up, just going to work, coming back home, going to sleep, getting back up, going to be. In this season in your life, your dream is getting ready to come to pass. And people don't understand the level of greatness that's been sleeping inside of you. And, and if you were going to have a nervous breakdown, somebody better shout in here, it would have happened back in February. If you were going to give up and die, it would have happened in July. But you came to tell every witch, warlock, and demon, look at me now. I'm a living testimony. I didn't make it this far on my own, but somebody prayed for me. God help me in here. For the 17 of y'all who came to have church, would you just shake your neighbor by the hand and say, neighbor? Today I came to wake up your dream. You didn't talk to the right person. Look at them again and say, Dang, huh? Today I came to wake up your dream. And when I give God this next shot, I'm shouting for what you've been dreaming about. Come on and shout for your name. That God is mature enough to handle their dream. Yeah. 
So I have to put some people out of your space. Oh God, help me here. Uh, I had to put some people out of your space because they were contaminating and bringing weakness for where it is that you're getting ready to go. And I need to preach to the six of y'all who know what I'm talking about right now to let you know how you felt then is not how you're going to feel now. And God is getting ready to break a cycle in this sanctuary right through here. And I don't know how many of y'all can handle this next move of God, but God says when you give me glory, I'm getting ready to break the cycle of stress. That whatever has been stressing you out, Crazy thing happens to me. 